The year 2024 is right around the corner, about two days away. And I believe that God gave me such a warning of what's to come in that year and even beyond that. You will not believe the dreams that happened, the dreams that he gave to my wife, my little sister, and myself without us even knowing we each had this dream until we came together and we told each other about it. The context of that dream was in the beginning of that entire war that started started between Israel and Hamas. Now the attack started on October 7th, but the dream that God gave me was on October 25th. And I have it written down right here. It was early in the morning and I started off by saying this. During this time, Hamas attacked Israel and there has been over a thousand deaths. There's clear separation in the United States for people that are pro-Israel or pro-Palestine. The Lord impressed it on my heart for the past couple of days to start reading the book of Romans. I kept on rereading the first three chapters and I honestly did not know why. And then these verses jumped out to me. It was Romans chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. This is what the verse says. But because you are stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, you are storing up terrible punishment for yourself. For a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil. Now this next part is what jumped out to me. For the Jew first and also for the Gentile, but there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile for God does not show favoritism. Again, that is Romans chapter two, verses five through 11. And I continue to write this in my notes about the dreams after I put down these verses. Immediately, everything that's going on right now in Israel popped into my head, that then there is going to be a judgment on the Gentiles next. For it clearly says in that verse that it was first to the Jew and then to the Gentiles. We saw what was happening to the Jews. And I'm not saying that it was specifically God's judgment on them, but it was so clear with everything that was going on then that a judgment was coming or wrath or a type of war or chaos was coming next to the Gentiles. Now, this is what I continue to write about what happened in my dream. Before I had this dream that night, I was praying about whether or not I should get a new camera, the very one that I'm shooting on now. And I told the Lord, I just felt it. I just felt it in me to tell the Lord in this way that he would tell my wife whether or not I should get this camera or not. And my wife did not know that I that I said this to the Lord and we didn't even speak about it before going to bed or anything like that. That's an important fact to know now so that when I tell you my wife's dream, that would make sense on why I wrote that down. But the dream that I had was it seemed like I was in a school setting. And there was huge mobs outside. There was young and older people. They were grabbing certain people and were not letting them go. And they started to beat up people. And I remember a, f a feeling that I had that my life was in danger. I dropped my book bag that had everything in it. And the only thing that I had was my wallet in my pocket. I managed to escape from these hands from this huge guy that was trying to hold me. And I remember running into a forest and I got down but for what seemed like only 10 seconds because an older man saw me and pointed me out. I got up and went to go see if I could get my book bag to see if it was still there, and it was, and no one was around. So I grabbed it and ran, and I remember me having a feeling like this setting was in the South, because I did used to live in the South for a couple of years, and it just felt like it was, it was Southern people, and the, even the weather, everything just felt like it was the South. But then when I ran out to the back, there was a rise in people that started to beat up the people that were trying to keep the people captive or not let anyone go. And when I heard them speaking, the people that started to retaliate, it sounded like New York accents, which is where I'm originally from. And then the dream ended there. And I feel like an, uh, an interpretation of that was that there's gonna be something that starts in the South and then is going to come up to New York. And there's gonna be people with a New York type of mentality that is militant and that's just not gonna let people push them over. It's not gonna 
keep them in a barrier or, or, or have people stop them from saying what needs to be said or making them go places that they need to go. But yes, that was the end of the dream. And then I told my wife about it and she said that she told the Lord last night to give her a dream whether or not if I should get the camera. So that's why I said it was important to know that I prayed that very night that Lord show my wife whether or not I should get this camera. And when I told her this dream in the morning, she tells me that she prayed last night to the Lord whether or not I should get the camera and show it to her in a dream. And she had one with something that was going on and I had to document it all. That was, now this is her dream. Um, me and her were going to some place that to meet up with another friend and a bunch of things was happening and I had to document. Of course, you might say that, that I could simply document something with my phone, of course. But no, she saw me holding a type of camera like the one I have now documenting everything. So that was a clear answer from the Lord that I need to get that camera. And then she had, there was more to that dream, but then she had another one after that. And it had to do with my mother and my little brother. Now my little brother is currently living in the South and my wife in the dream had an urgency to go speak to my mother and my mother was worried. She was packing so much food for my little brother before he went back down to the South because there was gonna be some kind of scarcity. There was something that she knew that was going on in the South that she knew he was gonna need these things to go back. Again, we had no prior talking before this before we went to sleep or anything like that. And she has this dream about a warning about the self, just like I had in my dream where I felt like all that chaos was starting in the South. And then in the part of the dream, she says that I showed her in the window that Christ was near and he was showing us how the moon was way smaller than it was supposed to be. And she says, we kept on trying to say to my little brother to stay, but he kept on insisting to go. And my mother was packing the food, super worried, and we helped her to get the food together for him. So that specifically right there is crazy because even in the Bible, it talks about the signs of Christ coming back and how you will see the signs with the moon. And it says it there so clearly in her dream of me showing her that Christ was coming back soon and that there were signs like the, like the moon being smaller and things like that. Now, the crazy part is what really had my mind blown that day was my little sister came over later and my wife started telling my little sister about my dream and her dream. And then my little sister said she had a dream as well. These three dreams were at the same night. So I knew for right here, I'm like, Lord, you were trying to say something. This is the dream that my little sister had. She says that she saw a group that were trying to unalive people. I have to speak like that so that so the video doesn't get flagged. She saw that, that there was a group of people that 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 were unaliving other people. And she says she forgot the name of that group, but she saw that they were planning to bomb the area of the place that we're living in, in New York. And she says, and I saw a timer in the sky showing how much time we had left to leave before they bombed it. And she says that she was warning everyone to pack their stuff and she was running around telling everyone in her family to hurry up and pack and leave. And that she barely had time to pack her things. And just in the nick of time that we were able to leave with about one minute left on the clock. And before the time went off, there was a bright light out of nowhere. And then the dream ended. Now, if God is not talking, then we must just have been hallucinating. No, we didn't eat the pizza last night. That, that That's what made us dream. No, I truly believe this is a warning that God is trying to give to us. Or there is something very crucial that is going to happen in this year to come. Now, there's a bunch of things coming like election and, and specifically with this election, it is going to spark a lot of different things. A lot of people are going to just go berserk off of the results of this election. And I truly believe that it's not just this election, but things that are going to happen with the economy 
and this separation that the world has been going through on whether if you're either on the left or whether you're if, if you're on the right worldwide is not just the united states but there is a lot of chaos that is coming but god gave me this encouragement to uplift and remind me to go back to those verses that jumped out to me in romans chapter 2 verses 5 through 11 it says that at, with that judgment to come i'm gonna read that verse again there will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil for the jew first and also for the gentile but this is what God reminded me of after realizing all those all those things that happened with the, in the dream was this part of the verse. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile, for God does not show favoritism. So just because all of this craziness is about to happen god is saying that for those that that do good those that are that that know him and he knows you the ones that are truly seeking after him it says there will be glory and honor and peace so even though there might be a food shortage, your fridge will not be empty your stomach will not be empty because why because even the word says that Jesus is the bread of life. He says not to even pray for what, what are you gonna wear on your back, what are you gonna eat that day, the roof that's going to be over your head because he is our father and we are his children. So he already knows and he's gonna already provide for that. He says that's how the, how, how the Gentiles pray and we are his adopted children. We don't need to worry about that. Even if there's a shortage in money, in gas, in water, in all these things, in heat, God is going to supernaturally provide it for his church, for the body of Christ, because he is faithful to his word. It is time that the Christians stop looking to the world for answers and that the world will start looking to us, the sons and daughters of God. That when all this stuff starts to happen, they'll start to see this group, these Christians are thriving in this kind of environment, are thriving when there's a market crash, when thriving when there's a famine in the land, are thriving when the water is contaminated and is undrinkable, but somehow they're getting water that they can drink that is purified. We need to rise up as Christians, as true believers in Christ, and be the light and salt of this world like God said. So yes, calamity will come, trials and tribulation, war will come, all these things are going to come, it's already prophesied, but that's why we are here. We are the body of Christ and he is the head. When Jesus Christ was here, he was answering everyone that came to him. So we should have an answer for everyone that comes to us as true believers. When they need healing, we can lay our hands because God said to go out and heal the sick, to go out and raise the dead. When, when, great, when great sickness comes, when things like that happened in 2020, we should be able to go out there and those that die from the sickness, we can go and be bold with our faith and lay our hands and then being healed. The people that die from the sickness being raised from the dead and having another chance because God word says that he is not willing that any man shall perish. So what are we doing? Are you going to continue to allow the media to put in all this fear in your head and have you prepare for the worldly way? Or are you going to believe the good news that Jesus Christ came and he died for us on the cross and rose again on the third day and he sent his Holy Spirit to come in and empower us to continue to do the very work that he did while he was here. What are we going to do, church, when all these things come? Are we going to sit back and let it happen? Or are we going to stand on the rock, stand on the cornerstone, Jesus Christ, and go do what he has called us to do? It is time for us to rise up and stop being so tolerant to all this wickedness and giving all this all this sloppy grace even on us Christians ourselves because it says that judgment first comes to the house of God. So yes, it's said in these verses that judgment first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. There is going to be a lot of exposing. God separating the wheat from the tares, showing who's really in their secret place, praying with God. He is going to show the world who has been abiding in him and and him abiding in them. 
So yes, a lot is going to come. The way you prepare for it is getting in God's word and getting in that secret place and praying and asking God what you need to do from today to prepare for what's to come. But I truly believe his word that says that for those who are doing good, there would be glory, honor, and peace from God. So even if you lose your job, there's going to be peace because God got you. If you see no food in the, in the supermarket that's around you, there is peace because God got you. That sickness might try to touch your body, but there is glory and peace because God got you. They might try to slander your name, but there it says here that there will be honor because that's what it says in his word. Now pray about this. Go in the secret place and pray about and ask, Holy Spirit, is this truly from you? Is this what is going to come in 2024? in the years that's coming after that. Show me in your word what is to come. Go read the latter end of, of the Gospel of Matthew and you will start to see the signs of Jesus coming. And you will see that it's going to happen regardless. No matter how much we try to stop certain things, wickedness is going to continue and get worse. But we, the church, is supposed to get brighter and brighter and be the light of this world. In the midst of all this darkness, all this wickedness, all these companies and celebrities and influencers promoting this darkness, we as believers of Jesus Christ need to go and be the light in this world. If this is resonating with your spirit and you are truly seeing this warning, but also have this peace, let me know in the comments below and share it with somebody else and see what their thoughts are. But if this did bless you, I, I wanna ask you to like, to comment your thoughts and subscribe for more. God bless you.